Council. Call order the special meeting of the Glendale City Council at 5.03 p.m. May we have a roll call for the City Council. Council members Manukian? Here. Najarian? Here. Quintero? Here. Yusefian? He's here. Mayor Weaver? Making a here. And do you have a report? The agenda for the March 20, 2007 special meeting of mm -hmm. the Glendale City Council was posted on Monday, March 19, 2007 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. City manager regarding oral update information and studies from MTA representative on proposed 710 freeway extension. Thank you. I guess I'll go straight to Mr. Starbird, who's going to go to well, Mr. Well, Mr. Mayor, for, for, uh, it isn't very often to do this, but I'm going to go to a council member. This a request to place this matter on an agenda for you to have a discussion was asked for by uh, your representative on the MTA and Metrolink, uh, Council Member Najarian. Uh, we structured it this way rather than having it be a presentation on the council agenda because Mr. Najarian indicated he'd like to have some feedback, not necessarily direction or a decision, but some feedback, sort of your reaction to the, what he's going to give you as an update on what he's hearing at the MTA on the issue of the extension of the 710 freeway. I with that, I'll, and we didn't prepare a staff report, but with that, well, I'll go to Mr. Jarian. I told Mr. Jarian it was okay to go ahead with it, and I want to be very specific on what he's telling us. I don't want to get out of hand and that people from all over Glendale, especially at the end, 210 freeway to send the city council. So couch your comments very carefully. I always do, Mr. Mayor. I know. Thank you for that vote of confidence. Yeah, very well. And thank you for letting me put this on the agenda uh, with such short notice. And the reason I did ask for it uh, to be on the agenda at, at this time today uh, is because on Thursday the 710 tunnel issue is coming before the MTA board. I wanted to inform my colleagues. Uh, of what's going on and as Mr. Starbert said to put it as an agenda item so if you have any questions or comments uh, Mr. Howard won't be wagging his finger at us point telling us to uh, point of order right, with a point of order so uh, basically the, the subject is the 710 tunnel and we had a presentation by the MTA uh, several months ago about uh, a report on their uh, quote-unquote feasibility study and the feasibility study identified uh, tunneling techniques that are available currently and uh, some of the, uh, the potential impacts to the uh, neighborhoods uh, adjacent to the, uh, to the tunnel. And, you know, this whole 710 issue has been going on for many decades. Uh, it was initially uh, blocked for 30 or so years from the folks down in South Pasadena who were opposed to a on-grade uh, freeway extension. And just so you all know where we're, what we're talking about, this is connecting the uh, 710 where it currently terminates at um, the five. Uh, at, it's at the, just at the 10, uh, oh I forgot. Oh the, yeah, the 10 and. Where, where the 10, right at Alhambra essentially. And it was designed to pick up again at the 210 uh, around about the Del Mar area. There's right. that stretch of freeway that kind of ends right there. Um, and it's starting to uh, cause some uh, concern again from the adjacent cities. Namely, uh, most importantly, uh, La Cañada is concerned. Uh, Pasadena is concerned. South Pasadena is concerned. I think we in Glendale, I don't want to use the word concerned, but I think we should be aware of where this project is moving and what the potential impact is. And the impact is that with the uh, recent growth of the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles, which is currently the largest uh, port, uh, most busiest port in the United States, and I think it's fourth in the entire uh, world. Uh, there's a high number of trucks and container trucks that are using the 710 uh, up from Long Beach uh, to distribute their goods throughout the, throughout the nation. Uh, what they're doing now is they're hitting that uh, end, of the, end of the 710 and they're funneling off uh, to the 10 freeway. Uh, if they intend to go north, many of them take the 5 freeway and take that north. The others that wish to go east just take the 10 and, and continue east. Um, the folks in Alhambra primarily have been saddled with a lot of street traffic 
due to the uh, non-connectivity of that freeway. So they're very much uh, interested in having a connection there. Uh, it will get the cars off the streets and onto a freeway, whether it's a tunnel route or a surface route. There has been an extremely high interest from the rest of the cities in the St. Gabriel Valley. Out of 31 cities, uh, I was informed by their uh, COG director that their vote is 29 to 2 in favor of connecting the 710. And they're looking at this tunnel issue, the, the tunnel route now, as their uh, best chance to get the connection going. Now, it's going to cost a lot. Uh, Right now, it's going to cost $13 million only for a, the next step of the study. The total costs of this tunnel uh, are estimated at perhaps $6 billion currently. It's called a, a mega project. Whether the, the money will ever come for this <coughs> tunnel, we don't know. But I think we need to decide, uh, everyone, first individually, and then if, as you want to get into groups, as to what position, if any, Glendale wants to take for this. Um, the impact is simply going to be a ton of uh, vehicular traffic as well as uh, truck diesel truck traffic that's going to be dumped uh, right at the, uh, let's say, the Rose Bowl area uh, in, in Pasadena. And those vehicles that are intending on traveling north uh, for distribution to the Bay Area, Seattle, Oregon, are going to come right up our back door through uh, La Cañada Flint Ridge, cut across our segment in La Crescenta, the Glendale area, uh, Sun Valley, uh, Tahanga, etc. And the ironic thing is that studies indicate that the minute that tunnel opens, the and they're projecting, should everything proceed on scale, they're looking at a 2030 opening date. Some of us may be around, some of us may be in Forest Lawn. Um, but uh, the problem is that that section of the 210, just north of the tunnel, is scheduled to open at a level of service F, which is open? the worst open at a level of service F. Uh, that is where the, of course, south of that uh, tunnel, it's going to clear up their traffic problem, uh -huh. but it's going to put all those vehicles on the 210 going north and it's going to eat up all the capacity that currently exists on that 210. It's not the busiest freeway, that stretch from uh, from Del Mar up through La Cañada, uh, Angeles Crest Highway, Ocean View, Pennsylvania, La Crescenta Avenue, uh, et cetera, as you proceed westbound. But it is, um, it's really going to present some impacts. We do have uh, many schools in the area. Uh, the particulate matters are going to be a concern. When I was in Washington, uh, Adam Schiff, uh, we had a meeting with Adam Schiff, and he was very much concerned that the MTA was getting too far ahead of itself in uh, labeling uh, and coming to a conclusion that this project is going to be approved, the EIR is going to be approved, the environmental documents are going to be accepted, and they'll be moving forward then. Um, I've received calls since then also from Anthony Portantino, the new assemblyman from the, from the 44th District, Opposing, it. Opposing, opposing, the opposing it. Opposing it. Uh, Anthony Portantino is <coughs> is very much against it, uh, and they're concerned in La Cañada that because there are so many schools in that area, of course they were never crazy about the freeway to begin with, um, and it's not so much a not in my backyard type of thing. It's already in their backyard, but they want the full impact of these vehicles to be identified, and uh, he doesn't feel. He doesn't feel that there there's any way to mitigate the extra pollution. What what will it do to the track traffic on the five? Because that heads north and we'll that it. runs through Glendale. It'll reduce the traffic on the five, I assume. You spread the loading. Um, load up the two. Tanks. There would be a redistribution. Uh, everything else being equal, if it were to open today, uh, with current levels, there would be a redistribution from the traffic, uh, essentially from the east. East LA Exchange, where the five and the ten hit northward, uh, and that would be redistributed to the two ten uh, coming up up the side. Well, listen, with the two ten, I'm not sure. Maybe they have an additional lane too. It's a it's a more of a straightaway <laughs> to 
use the current when they're doing the 10, then the 5, it's, they're jogging. And if they have the straight right. shot... I think it would be easier... Truck drivers are probably going to want to take I'm not a truck driver, but I understand. It, logic would assume that the less turns and interchanges that you can... Uh, uh, that you have to navigate the more preferred the and, route. And moving from the okay. 10 to the 5, I think, are using the old freeway designs that are not near as efficient right. as the new ones. Exactly. Uh, Ms. Starbird had a question for you. Well, there. I was just wondering, Mr. Najarian, have they even gotten to the point yet of, of, of agreeing on funding for an EIR? I doubt it. Because that's a massive, pro that's a massive undertaking. The EIR is estimated at $50 million, right. uh, for Ooh. this thing. Uh, my sense is that after so many years of being denied, this project is starting to get legs again and, and see the light of day. And there's going to be a huge push from the uh, the leaders, the elected leaders throughout the San Gabriel Valley and the downtown area mm -hmm. to find the funding. I'm curious why the communities along the 210 freeway would be supportive of the project because they, they stand to bear the same kind of issue we have on our length of the 210. You'll see a lot of redistribution of traffic from the 10 likely up to the 210. Uh, well, they're going to be going north, not east. Well, but you, you still got a lot of east-west movement going on, and, and the 90 and the 60 and the 10 uh, all come off, and they're just completely jammed now. And we've seen the impact of the 210 just with vehicular traffic since it's opened. And perhaps it's the redistribution that would ease up on the 10 freeway, and those cities that are solely uh, bisected by the 10 freeway are probably definitely in favor of this yeah, to that send that, that traffic to the, the 210. So what's next? Um, and let me just, uh, what's going to happen is when I go to the MTA, I'm going to make sure that uh, that this isn't, and we've, you know, we all know how EIRs can be. You get the EIR no matter what it says. You pull out the old rubber stamp and you stamp it. Um, I'm going to try and make sure that that doesn't occur, that, a, um, that the next steps that we take as the MTA are well-reasoned and that they are addressing those issues that we have uh, in our region uh, regarding the impacts, environmental, traffic, uh, vibrations, etc., uh, on this project, and that it is not a rubber stamp, and that we let them know that people are looking at this. Now, I want to give you the bad news. Okay, oh, that, this was is, a, that was a good news. This is scary. I want to. I want to let you know this. In, in offhand discussions with some of the MTA directors around the water cooler, uh, and uh, my. Uh, point was raising, well, you know, you haven't solved your problem, guys. Just because you're tunneling under South Pasadena, they're still very much opposed to it because basically the, the emissions are going to be funneled into just several mm -hmm. smokestacks, if you will, uh, placed in their city. I said, you haven't, you know, just because you're going underneath and maybe saving the homes, you haven't solved the problem with South Pass. They said, oh, that's okay, and I'll, I won't name them. Uh, that's okay. We'll just connect to the two freeway if South Pass gives us too much of a hard time. The two freeway. Our, two, our number yeah, two Glendale I, I, freeway. I, I, so uh, my comment to him was, if you thought South Pasadena caused you problems, you haven't seen Glendale yet. Um, <laughs> uh, I cannot imagine the impact that uh, that would have uh, and you all know where the two uh, ends up. It dumps down onto Alvarado, right around there. And there is some. There is a potential for the portal there. Engineers can do anything, Mr. Weaver. We we know that. Thank you. Um, it would be absolutely devastating, I think, to have those vehicles uh, coming right through the center of our city on the two freeway. So, this is meant to be uh, an information piece. Um, oh, okay. I'm not. You know, I'm not okay. crying wolf. Yet, but um, something sniffing around our back door. Okay, what's and on it's the not agenda? Friendly. What's on the agenda Thursday? On the agenda is to allocate uh, five million dollars of MTA money in uh, in accordance in, in supplement to five million dollars of Caltrans money, along with several million dollars that Adam Schiff has uh, allocated to take the next steps, which is. Well, the initial agenda item was leading to environmental clearance of the 710 tunnel. What does that mean? That means leading towards the environmental clearance. They've given you the conclusion that they want it cleared. And after a lot of 
uh, head banging and yelling and screaming, we said, no, how can you state your conclusion before in you your agenda effort. item before you've even studied it? Thank you. How one-sided uh, and improper is that? That was agreed to be removed. The leading to the environmental clearance part is going to be removed. I'm going to ask Caltrans, uh, Doug Failing, to specifically delineate the steps that he envisions the $13 million to be used for and make sure that uh, that includes a proper study of the impacts. Short of, the, short of starting the environmental document, uh, the impacts that will be um, well, that, that's uh, pretty that easy will be, to uh, define. affected upon our neighboring cities. You've just kind of laid it out. The shifts, the noise, uh, whatever, the things that the environmental document are going to have to address. And most likely, that's the, some agency is going to have to um, make overriding conditions to move ahead with. You're not going to so. reduce the impacts to less than significant from noise and pollution. So some agency is going to say, hey, that's okay, we're going to make overriding considerations. And that's after spending $50 million in today's dollars. That's exactly right. So this step is just to lay out, here are the potential impacts and the steps, things that will occur if an environmental document is even started. Um, that's which, correct. At the end of which, this <coughs> might kill it right there. There is a lot of political juice behind the tunnel at this point. There is some political juice opposing it, but if I had to put it on a scale, the scale would be much heavily weighed towards those supporting it. And that's my... Uh, Aside from the environmental issue. document, is any staff currently studying the tunnel concept, preliminary engineering studies, geology, I mean, geotech, um, the, that's the main thing. And the borrowing, the cost per mile, trying to determine where it would enter. Are they doing anything on the tunnel concept? They've done a very basic uh, feasibility study, which identifies the boring. Uh, they did three borings to check the geological stability. They uh, discussed the technology for the boring of the tunnel what itself. Kind of machine? Uh, Double barrel, whatever. Right, exactly. The portal uh, entry, exit, the ventilation stacks. Um, but that's kind of where it ended. It didn't discuss some of the more serious environmental issues involving the ultra-fine particulates. Uh, you, La Cañada is very, very much on top of this. They've already been in contact with the Keck School of Medicine at USC, and their experts say that uh, the type of particulate matters that will be emitted from these trucks in and around there, and they've got about 12 schools within a few hundred feet of this freeway, could cause irreversible damage to uh, to the lungs of the children. So, uh, just for record, so everybody knows, I've always said, as an engineer, I'd like to look at the concept. The surface is never going to work. You're going to destroy communities. You're going to bisect them. You're taking out historic homes destroying communities. So if it ever were going to be built, it would be a tunnel. So as an engineer, studying the cost and the and the, how difficult it would be to construct would be the next logical step to get to the point say, forget that too. So I want people to understand, I'm not saying I support even a tunnel. I'm supporting studying to find out if it's a bad deal, it's a bad deal. And you've just given some reasons uh, already. <coughs> why it probably would be. Well, and we'll wait for the experts that, for that, but, yes. but, we, but we need that. Uh, we need not to get ahead of ourselves in this whole process uh, due to the excitement of someday uh, having this. So you'll keep us informed? Uh, I will keep you informed uh, as issues develop. Mr. Thank you. Durkin. Well, okay. uh, I want to thank Mr. Najaran for give, giving us the update. I will personally be opposing it, uh, just so you know when you go there. Uh, I think we already – I was up in La Crescenta just last weekend, and uh, the noise issue on the 210 is, terrible. is a big issue. It's terrible. And if this goes through and we have, you know, additional trucks going through there with their new brakes and all of that, I can just imagine the havoc it could cause in, in the neighborhoods over there. So uh, I think uh, we should – 
be proactive on this, and if we need to work with our colleagues in uh, La Cunada or Pasadena and South Pasadena to uh, to present a united front on this issue, I think we should we should do it. My, my only concern is that having enough facts to absolutely justify what you're saying. If you just go say it. And, and the they say, well, the, where, where are you? The problem is there now on the two times. Oh, I know, I know. It's going but to get we have worse. noise monitoring. We know what it is. We can project what it's going to be. I want to go in with facts like from right. what you're getting on the air pollution and say, look, here, here, here. These are the facts. This is what's going to happen if you do it. Therefore, we're definitely absolutely opposed. Right. Going up there now and saying we're opposed, and they say, well, where are your facts? Well, we just know. No, no. That, that I, I, I meant getting together yeah. with the other cities, and, and because they're going to be more impacted than we are uh, with, well, the, with the pollutants that's and, going to be generated. In the, I think we should be getting together. The noise together is going to be a killer up in yeah. Montrose, I mean, La Crescent area. So I, I would suggest that if it is Council's decision to, to take that step. Well, there's three of us here. Uh, yeah. So I'm... Um, you know, that's where I am. I okay. will be opposing it, and uh, you know, and I, and I probably will, but I need the facts. I okay. need to have. I think our position should be that that we would uh, oppose uh, commencing any environmental clearance documents until a a more full and complete study Preliminary of the of study. the uh, of the potential adverse effects is done. Yeah, the pre a preliminary study. Just might end up uniting Pasadena, Glendale, whatever, against any proposed environmental document if it were to be taken and it gives us some weapons to then potentially go don't to Adam Shift, et cetera, to. Uh, don't say weapons. Don't say weapons. Ammo? Okay, you know, so you know. That's, uh, that's my report. So. Okay, thank you. If that is all, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, we stand adjourned 525. See you in 35.